the day, good people from the fine daily here of the Resolve Tuning Day Bravo Dave Anomaly, the Anomal Cars. Do you know me is the man who is excited to bring you more AWE Rebellion tonight. Things have settled down, people have gotten matches, and most importantly, we're about to learn the fourth competitors in our last Brawloween Masquerade Brawl qualifiers. That being said, of those triple threats, there is one final spot in those Fatal 5-Way matches, and those will be decided this Friday at Fracture. Who will be in those? Everybody who's lost a qualifying match, including the ones tonight, including our main event, featuring Kevin, Potential Boy Flop, featuring Dr. Robotnik, and featuring the Kang, King Ryoma. That world exists. However, also starting off the show, we have another qualifier. It will be Navia, who just come, uh, came off of a devastating loss to Mew. Francisca Von Karma looking to etch main championship gold in her name at Brawlo Me, a uh, Brawlo Ween, blah, 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 blah. And Tamara, who's more determined than ever to earn singles gold for the Racket of Psalm. And that's going to kick off our night. Last week, though, I think we need to talk about what went down. A backstage brawl that saw Jacob try to end Golden's career. Golden still pretty banged up. Not going to have him compete. But this is after a string of attacks by this, this, this makeshift faction, it seems like. Um, and it's going to come to a stop. Apparently, what? Gentleman Thomas? And also, uh, I'm sorry, just Thomas, not Gentleman Thomas. And Kanji were bailed out as well. Well, well, that can't happen. There has to be some sort of punishment. And admittedly, it doesn't feel like just firing them is punishment enough. But it might be, it might be. You know what I'm saying. Um, that being said, that's all that I've got in terms of that for those two. I'm going to figure that out. Jacob, however, tonight is going to be forced to face his ghost of Christmas past, present, and future. It's got Rando Bot. We've got Jacob, uh, who attacked uh, David Gunther and Yoru after their 1v1 recently. It is a three on one handicap match. Gold, I'm sure, will be watching from the sidelines, all still a little banged up. But thankfully, all right. Um, we also have our two AWE champions going one, I'm sorry, two on two with their challengers at Brawloween. We will see Kaito go two on two with March 7th, who got embarrassed recently. Hopefully March can have a little bit of a better showing this time against Hina with the one and the only Akihiko. We got ourselves a five-card show. It's going to be a fantastic show. I don't need to ramble on. There's not too many Brawloween announcements that need to be made today. So I think we just go on right here, right now. Shall we start this show as the stars go? As, as the stars, I'm actually not ready. Um, where are we? There we go. Now as the stars go... I left my apple cider in the fridge. There is no greater sense of loss. I will have to get it. I don't have to get it, but I will want to get it at some point. But that's the future. This is the now. The now is Navia, and the now could see Navia become all-star champion by the end of this month. Huh? Will it happen? We'll see. Could she make her way into the R uh, the R the All-Star Championship Masquerade Brawl? Determines the number one contender, and that person will go on later that night to fight for the All-Star Championship. She could be put toe to toe against AJ Lee. Does Navia has what it takes? Does does she have what it takes? That's the real question. She got the pin at AV Mania 3, but just recently she was embarrassed by Miss Muaruma. 
is the boss of Spina di Rosula. Going to be able to come out on top? We'll see. Because somebody else who has recently been taking the AWE by storm. Whenever she appears, everyone sits up and pays attention. They know that she is the authority in the AWE. She is... She will prosecute you. She will whip you, and it will not be a good time in this triple threat match. She knows she's got to get a pinfall to take the W. Not a pinfall, the one and only pinfall. It's one pin to win. It's been like that the entire time. We've seen a sense of agency for a lot of the competitors. But that's not what it's going to be at the end if she's not able to win tonight. If she's not able to win tonight, she's got, once again, as we've said, one more chance at this Friday night's Fracture. Eight-person battle royale. Is she going to say, forget that battle royale? I'm marking, or rather punching my ticket right now. Well, she's going to have to contend with Navia and... A former tables champion in Tamara. Tamara has had... A roller coaster of a career. And by that, it's been filled with ups and downs and ups and downs and ebbs and flows and ebbs and flows. She debuted last year at AV Mania 3. She and the Racket of Psalm came out on top. She won the Tables Championship, helped the Racket of Psalm get another championship match to make sure they became tag team champions. And unfortunately, she lost her Tables Championship. Uh, not too... I think she had one successful defense. It's hard with that Tables Championship. That being said... As we go forward a little bit more, she competed in a, I, I suppose, a, a fatal four-way, like, number one contender, like, a tournament, where she, if all points were considered, would have been number one. However, in the last match she was had, she had to get replaced because of an injury. An injury that stopped her from competing all the way until May. Not for nothing. Which is crazy. That being said, she's here today. She's gotten embarrassed by Hina before. Will March also embarrass, uh, get embarrassed by Hina at Brawloween? And now you kind of have to think. It's not just like a, oh my gosh, she got embarrassed. No. It's, oh my gosh, she went one-on-one -on -one with Hina. Who wouldn't get embarrassed? Von Karma realizing, all right, she's in the ring. With a fellow former champion, remember, Von Karma did hold the Tables Championship very briefly. The only non-champion in this ring right now is Navia. However, I believe she is also the newest competitor? Yeah, I think so. It's a toss-up. I'm not sure if uh, Von Karma is newer or if uh, um, Navia is newer, but I will admit they're about... Oof! Oof! Similar in terms of their new ability, or I guess their, their, their recency. But right now, Navi has proven why she can hang in there with the Sharks. It is sink or swim tonight. Jessica, fantastic referee, refing this matchup. Clothesline, bulldog combination by Tamara. The leader of the racket of Psalm. Oh, princess, my princess. Ooh, hold on. Got the reversal on Navia. But gets tossed with a Samoan drop. Did you see the muscle it took to bring Tamara over her head and onto the ground? Von Karma realizing they're dealing with each other right there. She has all the opportunity in the world to get any weapon. Chooses a ladder. And I'm not going to question that because we've seen ladders do incredible damage. Just like the floor did damage as she went pitter-patter, bounce-bounce off of it. But still able to recover and hit a sick drop kick to the front and to the back of Tamara. Tamara now, unfortunately, getting the, the worst of, of both ends of the attack from both of these ladies. Oof. Russian leg sweep. Wait a minute. But Von Karma still in control. What is it going to take from Tamara to get back in this fight? Maybe have them focus on each other. Oh, wait. Hold on a minute. I thought for a hot second... She was going for a pin, and I was like, that's that's silly. Why would you do that? It's got to happen inside of the ring. However, she was going for some mission. She was looking to wear Francisca Von Karma down. Uh, Tamara running all the way around, looking at Von Karma, saying, I got the weapon, and you're going to taste it right to the gut with that sledgehammer. Going for a quick pinfall. That's one. 
I, it was broken up by Navia. Maybe that sledgehammer did a little bit more than we thought. Tossed outside the ring, but turned her back to Von Karma and Von Karma. Looked like a quick rake of the eyes. Anything goes in this matchup, just like a figure four leg lock. Trying to weaken that sandstorm kick, but the reversal of the pressure, and now the pressure's on Von Karma. What is Franny to do in this ooh, situation? And one has to wonder, what would Franny be dressing up as in a masquerade brawl? All of me is kind of wondering what all three of these ladies would dress up as. We got a lot of costume uh, coordination going in for Brawloween. Pop-up kick! And Tamara tasted all of that, and now Navi is in full control of this one. Oh, what is she doing? Oh, did you see how far she whipped her into the middle rope? I didn't even know that was a thing you could do. Look at that. Picture perfect. Right on the nose, right on the button. Tamara back in control. Francisca outside the ring. Neckbreaker onto the table. Now I want you guys to know, even if that table's not up, dude, landing on those jagged metal portions of the table, the table's still a weapon in that regard. And Tamara able to take it to both competitors. Is she about to stun the both of them? Oh my gosh! Onto the corner of the ladder, Tamara's going wild. Now going after Navia, the combos. Navia with a block of that final one. Twisted back around, kick to the midsection. Oh, uh, but look at this, neckbreaker face buster! But, oh my gosh, I was going to say, is Von Karma going to take advantage? Navia right back up to her feet. Goes for a quick pinfall. That is one. That's two. Ooh, no, it's not two. Jessica holding up that one finger, signifying it was just a one count. Tamara watching anxious, uh, anxiously, rather. Saying I gotta make sure that I get her the second she's available, the second she's free. Kick to the midsection, she's going for that sandstorm kick, connects. But look who's staying right there, ready to break it up immediately. Hold on, look at that, fired right back. Tamara's going strong in this fight. But Navia, hungry for championship gold. Fires again and again, and what is she thinking here? Big shot to the back. Into the ropes, up, and undone with that kick. Focuses back in on Von Karma, who just got into the ring with a weapon. Has her up and slams her down. Quick pinfall. That's one. That's just one. Von Karma is built different. Just one, Von Karma's a built different. That being said, dragged into the corner. What is Tamara thinking here? Missed that shot and had to turn around. Oh, she's laid right down onto... Ugh! Oh, no! The blockbuster! And you see her ricochet back and then her back lands flat onto the ladder. A sickening display of unadulterated carnage with that move. A move that normally wouldn't look too devastating, but sitting on top of that ladder made it look nasty. Tamara puts that table down, but not quick enough. I think for a minute it looked like Von Karma may have been thinking about hitting that maneuver. Goodness gracious, lands it flush back on the mat. One, two, Tamara might have to burn resiliency. She does, and now she has the biggest target on her back, as if the ladder and that finisher were not enough. Boom. Navia starting to realize, okay. There's a world. Oh, there was a world, but do you know what just happened? You know what's about to happen, neck breaker. Oh, uh, and another one, this time by Von Karma. A series of neck breakers from all three of these ladies. Going for that quick pinfall. She's been hurt so much already. One, two, three. That's it. Von Karma goes on. Navia was too busy celebrating on the apron. And your winner. And going on to the masquerade brawl. Francisca Von Karma. 
She said, I'll be delivering the final verdict at Brawloween. And that verdict is Mia squashing AJ Lee. Will she be able to do it? I'm not sure, but if anyone can, it... What the... I believe in Von Karma, not for nothing. When she's on it, she is on it. A sense of agency, she is on it. She targeted to marry the entire fight, she was on it. And look who she pinned, and look who won. Good for her. That being said, we gotta continue on with our show. Next, we have Champions in Action. It is Kaito and March 7th versus... Akihiko and Hina, the challengers for the AWE Championships at Brawl Oween. What would their what will their match types be? Once again, we'll spin the wheel and they'll make the deal. We'll find out that night. So the competitors can't really truly prepare what's going on. How do you prepare for the unknown? Potentially prepare for anything and everything? There's some wild match types that'll be on there, so we'll see if they will. Be prepared. But tonight, there's prepared as they can be. Their partners, hungry as ever. March, hungry to prove herself after, after that embarrassing loss, but now she's fighting. Hina. And we'll get into that a little bit more as the stars go. Black. Because as we begin, an unexpected surprise in Aki Hiko. His hair's growing still a little bit more. A little bit more, okay. Eventually, he'll probably have his hair back. Poor Toph got to him this summer. That, in that enraged him, that fueled him a little bit more. Every single time, and now he is here, and he has got an AWE Championship opportunity. Won it just recently at uh, Inferno. And now, faces off against Kaito in a never, never happened before match. And in fact, this will be the first time that they tussle in the ring, I believe. Let's see if the mad boxer Akihiko is going to be able to tussle his way to a championship in a couple weeks' time. This time, however, he's partnered with someone who's very familiar with holding that AWE championship. When it comes down to it, when it comes down to that title, she's one of the greatest of all time. When it comes down to her defenses, she means business. She still believes that she lost to a fluke with Sayaka. And she's looking to prove that against March, saying a fluke won't happen again. March is going to have to defeat the woman who has dominated that AWE championship for most of this calendar year. From last fight before Christmas all the way until this summer, she was on top of the world. And to say how far she's fallen, would be a lie because she's still on top of the world. She earned her way back to the top spot. And now, she's going to be going toe to toe with March tonight for the very first time in mixed tag team action. They'll be familiar with each other going in to Brawloween, but that doesn't matter because we don't know what kind of match they'll be fighting in. That is. Well, terrified. For March, you have to imagine how terrified she must be fending off against this, this lantern-carrying fiend. But you know what? She's still one of the best. What can I say? Like, what can I say when, it, when you think of Hina? You think, all right, you know what? She's got it. She's got like, she's got it. She is an all-timer. Hey, if we had an AWE Hall of Fame, when she retires, she would be in there. But for right now, 
She's got to focus. Kaito. Still coming out. To the other side, however. And from New York. It's a matter of like, wh what do we make of Kaito Momoto? Just recently, he was able to, to overcome Nathan in that, that uh, Shuichi Memorial battle, that match, that open challenge. He was able to team up with Cassius and didn't even cheat to win. They, they won it clean. They did it. He even, in a, in a sense, beat I'll Hate Them, who was lurking at every corner to try to take that AWE championship from him. Or... Could that all be a ruse so Ito gets comfortable? And Ito is the one who he cashes in on. There's a... Look, he's a smart man. And it's so dangerous to have such a smart man have that briefcase. To have that golden ticket. That being said, Kaito has never gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with Akihiko. He'll be able to get a, a measure of what he's all about tonight but after an embarrassing loss and I hate to say it like that but she knows it was to Sakura March has to recollect herself may even have to reinvent herself because right now all this happiness all these pinatas may not be working for her she wanted AV Mania 3 by climbing a ladder and snatch it down a championship while everybody else was was too busy or too battered. Everyone's saying, hey, now they're saying to themselves, maybe she got lucky. If she's able to beat Hina, that's a statement-making performance in her championship reign. However, if Hina beats her and handily, she'll just be a blip on that championship lineage. It is Akihiko and Kaito starting this matchup off. It is champions versus challengers. Let's see how it all plays out. Jessica calling this one too. As this match begins. Toss into the corner. Ooh, hold on. Got the feet up already on the middle rope. What is Kaito thinking here? Missile drop kick from the middle rope. Akihiko. He might have get himself together. Kaito not letting up. Staying on Akihiko, the audience, a little bit mixed on Kaito. You have to keep in mind, Kaito has done some rather nasty things after joining the other side. We remember what he did to Kang Ryoma, who's in action tonight. You remember what he did to the pimp, Kazuichi. Has he ever apologized to them? Maybe it's too hard for him to apologize. I'm not sure. Oh my gosh. Flipped him around, punched him right in the jaw. Tried it a drop kick, but Akiko starting to get a measure of Kaito's moves, but unable to counter that combo. Hold on a minute. Beats Akiko senseless, and now we're seeing these two march, letting out hot, getting out, or starting out rather hot, going quickly after Hina saying, I got a lot to prove in this fight. I'm not even, I'm not sure if she'll be able to do it. We'll see how Hina is going to uh, reverse. And with one kick, marches down, but able to get back to her feet. Despite her entrance, she does seem to be taking this match a little bit more serious, saying, stay in that corner. I can't let you know everything I got up my sleeve. Huh? And you know what? Who knows? Maybe that was a part of what she wanted to do. Maybe she got bodied by Sakura so Hina couldn't get the information, the intel of her moves, of what she's capable of. That's all I got for her, to be honest. Otherwise, she just got trounced, which I think is the much more believable option right now. Trying to tweak the ankles of Kaito. Knows of that moon landing. If it hits, maybe he'll be too devastated to even get the pinfall afterwards. As he continues to go after the legs. If you keep in mind. <coughs> going after the legs. That is a surefire. Whoop. Boss strategy and boss will be facing off against Arrow. This Friday night in the main event of Fracture. 
A grudge match to settle it all. Tag made to march. Marching Hina back at it. Didn't get a chance to really go at it the last time. Flying crossbody by Hina. Marge getting no, didn't get dragged. Switched it into another toss and gets flattened with that flying crossbody again. Drag to the ropes. Hina just a little bit stronger than March. A little bit more powerful. And that power let her get into the sleeper hold quick. Legs wrapped around too. Hold on a minute. March slowly fading but able to get back up. On her feet before Hina, but... Oh, I'm rattling Hina with that knee. Hina's still able to get the advantage, though. Oh, my gosh. Chopped her in the spine. Hina is a very dangerous woman, whether you're her friend or her enemy. When that bell rings, she is a different beast. March able to get the elbow up right into the repaired eye of Hina. Oh, my gosh. Up and around. Crawls into the pinfall. Hina could be in danger. One, two. Kick out. Two. No resiliency. March going under. Going over. Ready for that move. Flap Jack right onto the Rebellion logo. Going after the knees and the ankles of Hina as well. Turnabout is fair play on your partner's march. And Hina, neither one of them has a signature built up. Hina able to block that. Hits a suplex of her own. Tried in an uppercut. March blocks that. And a double stomp right onto the chest. March 7th is trying to ice Hina out. And make this a picture-perfect moment. For her selfish attacks, Kaito in. And this, I'll tell you what, is a... This is what we gotta watch. Kaito, Akiko, both have... Oh my gosh! I was gonna say both have signatures. That wasn't even a signature. Kaito just hit that out of nowhere and it was pretty. Akiko with a reversal. Goes under. If he hits Kaito with a punch right to the gut. A body shot. And a face buster... Flatliner S goes for the pinfall. One, two. Kaito does not use resiliency though. Kips right back up. Doesn't use resiliency, but does waste his finisher by kipping up. And if uh, I was gonna say if Akiko thinks about hitting that punch, it could be curtains, but instead lifts him up, slams him down, and then punches him in the face. I told you guys the masterful hands of Akiko. There's a world where he is the AWE champion soon, the knee by March. She can rattle you with those knees. Butterfly position. And twisting cutter. The camera flashes for one and two. Hina kicks out. Also no resiliency. March off the top rope. Oh my gosh. Almost an inverse 450 from the inside. Hina kicks out at one. Hina kicks out at one. March in danger now. Hina with a, a choking, uh, not pile driver, I'm sorry, spine buster essentially. And a Uranagi. Now starting to systematically dissect March 7th. Huh? Going after every body part. And this is just... Hopefully not torture because now she's lifting March up saying get right up so I can slam you back down. She just did that from a vertical position. This time, March up back on the ground. Got her again. Now keep in mind... Oh, Kaito. Realizing he has to come out of the gate. If he gets hit by those heavy hands of Akiko, he could be down for three. Tried to go for that punch. He tried to go for it. Kaito with a reversal. Has him in there deep. The other side connects. Kaito hits the other side. One, two. Akiko does not have resiliency either. Akihiko had no resiliency. It was not built up and that could have been the end of this fight. Tried to slam him down. Thinking about setting up for that moon landing perhaps. But Akihiko reverses. Gets that reverse DDT. 
an incredible mixed tag team match so far as Kaito's busted open with the heavy hands of Akihiko. It's what we were talking about. One shot. Clock Kaito busted him wide open. March, every single time Hina takes a moment of hesitation, runs up with that knee, and she may have found a weakness kick out. No resiliency again. March surprised that Hina got up so fast, and she may be a little bit more surprised as the pop-up punch connects. March lifted up, and she might be placed... Oh, hold on. March, I think, may have just saved herself. Hina certainly thinking about that sister Abigail. What is March thinking about, though, is the real question. Knees to the gut. Uh, oh my gosh, like a tarantula hold. She's got to let go of that, unfortunately. That can't get her the win, but it's going to hurt. March has her in the corner again. Hina gets the elbow up. Returns fire. Headbutts. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. Oh my. As it's what we said earlier. And as she chokes her out, she's a different beast in the ring. She is an absolute different beast as March Gear rolls up. Doesn't have resiliency. One. She's got a whole lot of fight left, apparently. She got a whole lot of fight left. Kaito. Once again, this time, Aki was trying to go high, so Kaito went low. Stomp on the gut, trying to keep it there. Ruin the ribs, as he's maybe thinking about that moon landing, but look who stood up immediately. Akiko saying, all right, I gotta get him one shot, and it could be all over for him. Oh my gosh, he reversed his signature. And now Akihiko... Maybe the one to put the champion away. Kaito able to get right back up. Swing blade. And a shot to the arm. Kaito going to tag in March. <clears throat> Realizes March has a signature finisher. Hina also has signature finisher. But March strikes first up and we've seen her do it before. Down. Snap shot. Lifts her up again saying, I know that's not going to be enough. Throws her into the corner. But Hina once again ready for her. And she's got her in that let her win submission. No resiliency. March able to break out of it. I don't know how she was able to get out of it, but she got out. Reversal by Hina. Tosses March over the top rope. March feeling in her back. This is a much better fight than she had against Sakura. These two could tear apart the house, tear the roof off of the place at Brawloween in their 1v1. But right now, Hina is oof. Trying to break the face off of the body of March, to be honest. Breaking the eyes. We are at a five count as March gets turns inside out. Gets the knees up, though. We're at six. Seven, Hina's tossed in, and March follows. What she got here? Dragon screw on the knee. And then whipping the, the whole leg back. Hina, it looks like she's feeling it on that one. You can see the pain in her face there. One, a two. And you could see the pain in her face so much so that she had to burn resiliency. That corkscrew of the knee may have been enough to neutralize Hina. Again, Kaito goes low. Stomp to the arm, trying to weaken those heavy fists. Kaito going up to the top rope. What is he thinking here? Doesn't have the moon landing ready. Akiko wisely rolling out of the way. Kaito forced to step down. Akiko misses that hit. What is Kaito thinking? Whatever he's thinking, it sure didn't work. Akihiko right back up. And he's going shot after shot. The gut punches. The quick combos. And another gut punch. Oh, if he hits another shot. One more shot and Kaito could be out of this one. Capture suplex. But Kaito with a roll up. Akiko, he could have to burn resiliency here. One, two. I thought Kaito might have stolen it. I thought Akiko was thinking, oh yeah, I've got this. Easy peasy. Uh, I think Akiko was thinking about using that signature. Kaito catches him with a kick as he's sitting down instead. Still trying to weaken those arms. It's honestly working. Just look at it. 
His arms have entered yellow. And again, this time not that, that rattling knee. This time put her whole leg into it. Because she knows she's got to do more to put Hina away. She's begging to get her into that corner. She's begging to be able to, to hit that finisher. But if she's able to do it here, turns her around. Climbs to the top rope. March 7th, up high, begging for Hina to get up. What is she thinking? Oh my gosh, the rolling drop kick. Ice Pale puts Hina... No! Why did I think Hina was going to go down? I should have known better. I should have known better because you saw March and she was like, What? All of us collectively may have been like, What? Marcia surely thinks she's in danger now. Other side connects again. Hina runs back in there, breaks it up immediately. Akio getting right back up. Oh, but look at this. The punch connects. Haymaker. Haymaker strikes, and that is a breakup by Marcia. At this juncture in time, neither of the ladies can get back uh, in here. I think I might know what he's plotting here. Surprisingly, though, I'll, I'll tell you what, Jessica's not here fixing it yet. Oh, she's fixing it. Akiko reverses that. Kaito able to get the, the upper hand. Jessica, you gotta fix it quick. Or... You know what I'm surprised that they don't have in this game? Because Jessica apparently heard that tag, was able to make the call for tags, and she was distracted. I thought, you know, maybe she wouldn't be able to make that tag. March has been beaten up a little bit. One? March, where was this when you were fighting Hina? My gosh. Reversal. I'm sorry, when you were fighting Sakura... Uh, she tried to go for the Sister Abigail. March reverses. March reversed. Oh my gosh, wait a minute. March has admittedly been taking it to Hina. I'm at a loss for words, but these two admittedly have been going actually pretty even between each, you, uh, each other. rather. These two honestly might be able to steal the show as well. And keep in mind... There's always going to be that looming threat of Mr. Money in the Bank, I'll hate them. Hina stunned on the outside of Kaito. Can hit a big move here. Akiko with the reversals. I, uh, no, the other side as well. If Akiko can hit a big move and get March to... Oh, we've seen that before. Kaito sends him spinning. Setting up again, I think, for... If you believe yours is the only way. It's the other side for one, two. Resiliency. Hina just made it up. Akiko rolling to the side. Kaito makes the tag. And now you have to think March has the advantage. And again, she's hit that every single time. Hina a step too slow when it comes to March 7th because she's going for this move again unless Hina reverses it. We've seen her do it dozens of times tonight. Snapshot hits. The neck goes back on the mat for she pins. Hina. Forget what I said earlier. March took it to Hina. She said, don't underestimate me based on one performance. Everyone has their off nights. This was not her off night, to say the least. Stars, come on back. My gosh. <clears throat> well, I'll be real. That was a great mixed tag team match. Everyone... Admittedly proved themselves a little bit in that match. However, Hina might need to reevaluate what's going on in that situation. But we got ourselves a one-on-three handicap match. 
Fisher, Jacob Baker versus David Yoru and Randall Bot. Now you know. Did I say you know we we should we we gotta do something about this this uh this Jacob guy? Yeah, I did. <clears throat> am I proud of this? Yeah, no, I am. I am. Go get him, boys. Go get him. That being said, Jacob just needs one pinfall to win. What? Is he gonna be able to do it? That's the real question. I'm not sure. And here he comes, Jacob Baker. Definitely means business. You gotta keep your eyes on that man. Is he trustworthy? No. Is he a good guy? No. Is he is he kind? No. Considerate? No. Do we like him? No. Uh, am I unbiased? No. But I'll tell you what. He is a fighter. He is a fighter, no matter how delusional he may be, however brutal he might be, he is a fighter, and he's coming out for this fight, because he has to come out for this fight, and he has to come out here alone, because his boys are banned from rebellion. Ridiculous. That being said, coming out first, it is David Gunter. Best of luck to him. <clears throat> uh, David did just have a loss against Yoru. Yoru was able to come out on top. Um, at that juncture, it should have been all said and done, but Jacob came out and attacked both of them. Jacob has just been attacking people left and right. This is like... Really his first sanctioned match in a long time. He was supposed to have a sanctioned match last week, but instead tried to get the upper hand and ended up almost ending Golden's career. Luckily, Nakamaru, a member of our security team, was backstage to even the odds help take down that two-on-one assault. However, David and Yo who both wanted to get their hands on Jacob. A lot of people want to get their hands on Jacob. I'm sure Golden, after that attack, wants to get his hands on Jacob as well. We'll see how that all plays out. We'll see in the near future, but for right now, it is time for a little randomness. It's time for a little rando bot. Rando bot, the best of luck to you. Has admittedly put on some pretty nice performances in OC Revolution. Which, those submissions are open throughout the entirety of October, so make sure to get them in. Because you could see, just like these OCs, some of your OCs show up at Rebellion. They could show up anywhere. They could show up at all sorts of places. Who knows? Uh, yeah, who knows? I know, apparently. It's me. I know. I booked the show. I am the general manager, and now, Randobot, and it's kind of interesting because it's a matter of can, can Randobot coexist with Yoru. They have worked together in the past, however, as everything that's going on right now indicates, uh, Yoru has embraced a little bit of a darker side, huh? As she said, the other side of darkness. Huh? Yoru walks in, determined, embracing the darkness, but what will unfold... I mean, we'll see what happens, huh? to be honest. Huh? Best of luck to him, best of luck to uh, all of our competitors except for Jacob, admittedly. Look, I... I need to try and be more non-unbiased, uh, rather. But you know what? I think we're all pretty biased against Jacob. Um, to say he's a piece of trash, I think, would be rude. Uh, so that's exactly why I'm going to say it. He is a piece of trash, a sack of garbage, 
who's trying to, to ruin some of my competitors' lives, ruin my show, do some sort of take- that's not gonna happen. And that's why he finds himself tonight with no help. With no help at all. 3v1, and it begins right now, David starting off. Uh, David starting off, and David uh, is, is is not looking too too good against this man's... Oh, but you know what? He missed wildly. David gets a <clears throat> hurricane run up on Jacob. Makes a quick tag, and that's going to be their saving grace in this match. The ability to tag in. The ability to make hot tags. The ability to save your partner. All of that. Oof! Is exactly what you want to see. Big chop by Jacob. Rando Bot fires back. Pullback attack by Rando Bot, lifting Jacob right back up. Uh, okay, the strength of our robot friend. Big fall away slam. Jacob, however, kips right back up. Look at that. Randobot still throwing hands, throwing fiery fist. Jacob with a reversal, though. And a deep arm drag, essentially almost a hip toss in that regard. And now look at the combos. Hold on. Randobot grabbing the luck at the last second. And it's a neck breaker. Jacob on the verge of being stunned, and now we're seeing these hot tags continue to be made. Randobot not tagging in Yoru. Interesting decision not to tag in. Huh? Someone who's got, he's got, honestly, familiarity with. Huh? What is David doing here? Oh my gosh, dropkick. Huh? As he was hung up in the ropes. Huh? David's still firing back, though. Unrelenting in this assault. Goes to make a tag. Huh? And now Yoru is in action. Goes for... Admittedly, slowly approaching... Stares at Jacob in the face, but you don't want to stare at that man for too long. Jacob trying to use... Oh, hold on. Deep bear hug. <clears throat> it looks like they might have had a strategy. It looks like they're going after the back. They're going after the back, the chest, the midsection of Jacob. But Jacob is trying his best to hit swing blade after swing blade. You don't want him to get fired up. As much as we talk about him, he is admittedly a, a, a decent competitor in the ring. Two of them all... Oh, hold on. It looked like he was going for that barrack again. Reversed by Jacob. Downward strikes and a elbow. It looked like almost a forearm, actually. Right into the face of Yoru. Turns him around. And a backstabber. Into the pin. Whoa, not even one. Admittedly, not even one. Yo fires back. Turns Jacob around. Baker with the... I'm sorry. Gets back raked. Reversing. Jacob, I'm sure, more than happy to win this thing by count out. I was going to say, are there count outs? Oh, look at that. Neither He wasn't able to get either of them down. Uh, Yoru? Yoru? Okay, you're a five. I was gonna say, what on earth? Oh my gosh! He turned around into a spear, though! Bottom row moonsault, pinfall. One. Randobite comes in to break it up. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, turn him around. Wicked kick. And this is honestly the best opportunity he's got. David down. Suckered in. Randobot can't come in to make a save. If Jacob's able to hit that finisher on Yoru, we might see a member of that three-person team burn resiliency, and then there is a target on Yoru's back. Jacob has found, could admittedly find himself a path to victory. But right now, he is getting decimated slowly, but surely by Yoru as... Oh my gosh! 
A tag's been made, and a smart tag as well. Oh no! Jessica breaks it up! I'll tell you what, Jacob isn't taking this match lightly at the very least. Uh, what did he just do to that man? What did he just do to Yoru? Randobot with the knee. Tags in David. Jacob wisely rolling outside of the ring, I think. At least I think it's wise. David goes for the jump. Ah, uh, Jacob too wise as well. The ring IQ is high in that regard. But look at that. A little bit of tag team action between those two. It's not so easy when you're the one getting jumped, is it? Oh, uh, maybe I spoke too soon. Commentator's curse. Because right now, we're at a count of four. And he's stunned, actually. We're at a count of six. David's gonna have to bring Jacob back into the ring. Uh, no slides in himself. It looks like these three might win by count out. No, Jacob makes his way back in. David thinking he had won this thing by count out. I thought, we all thought for a second he won it by count out, but Jacob made it into the nick of time. Trying to get some free damage on all three competitors. Folks, is back in. Uh, back in on David, who gets sent down. A move we had just seen. It looked like he crawled into the pin, but didn't actually go for the pin. And now he's going for the pin. Randobot. One. Didn't. Two. Jacob didn't have resiliency. That admittedly could have been the match. Middle row moonsault again. Oh, he can't get in. Neither one of them can get in right now. And I think Jacob realizing that. Knocks Randobot down. Uh, and we might see both of them being stunned on the outside. And he, oh my gosh, incidentally rolled out of the way to ensure that he hits Yoru. Extra damage, friendly fire apparently on. He's making them look like fools out of themselves. We are at a count of three. Randobot tossed in, elbow to the chest of David. I'm sorry, by David into the chest of Jacob. We're at a count of six. Now we're back at a count of one, actually. And Jacob just wisely using every moment he can to try and take down another member of their team. A peg. Boom. Onto the knee. And a wicked big boot. David able to get the knee up, though. Waiting for Jacob to get up. Can't wait any longer. His impatience may have gotten the better of him, Spear. Rolls into the pin. Resiliency burned by David. The other two can't help right now. If he decides... Hit that move one too many times. Oh no! Shot to the chest! Shogun's blade, one and two! That's it! Jacob Baker wins! Here is your winner, Jacob, Baker. Jacob Baker played that match like a genius. Had them fight each other, essentially. And as the curtains closed, he saw an opportunity saying, you two can't even come to help. Hit that blade, and down he went. It was three on one. And I'll be real. Love him or hate him, he just proved that he's a very dangerous man. That being said, I gotta go get a little wheel. Because it was our fourth match of the night, we gotta spin the wheel, make that deal, so don't mind if we do, let's get on over here. Well, it's time to spin that wheel, and make that deal. I wish I could, like, grab it and spin it myself. I, I guess I could pretend to. It goes, it goes that way, 
That would so I'd have to like grab it from from over over uh like like he here. All right, hold on. Let me let me spin that wheel real quick. Uh, uh let me let me grab it on this. I'm a, I'm gonna grab it from up here and I'm gonna just I'm gonna just yank it. I'm gonna I'm gonna yank it that way. All right, here we here we go. Spin that wheel. Make that deal. It is going to be a huh. Oh, it kind of worked it. Spin the wheel round and round where it stops. It's made one sound, fatal four way, one pinfall, hell in a cell. Well, and look, you know, there's nothing here. I will say, this this one color is a little bit too light, so I might have to make it the same as this color up here. Hey, you see? We're working on all the kinks, I'll tell you what. However, make that fade away. I'm gonna go set up that match because I gotta change the match type because I didn't know what kind of match type it was gonna be. Let's go ahead. And as as I come back, the stars will probably quickly go black right afterwards. And so it will be Neo, Queen, Charlie, and Noel. Fatal four way. Hell in a cell and it starts as the stars go black huh? all right fatal four-way hell in a cell don't often see that in fact um, outside of a fatal four-way tag team hell in a cell the match i'm not sure if we've had a fatal four-way tag team or a fatal four-way hell in a cell match it's possible but who knows, this may be the first one in AWE history. Uh, I'm not super familiar with all the matches in the, um, the Wins Davy era. But we'll see how it all plays out. Neo, first person in this fight. It makes me want some ice cream. But that's not the point. That, that, is, that is not the point. We'll see how Neo's able to perform in her very first Hell in a Cell match. She's competed in a Steel Cage match before, but I'll tell you what. Those are two different beasts. Best of luck to her. And she'll be sharing the ring with. I have a dream. I'm here to tell. Someone who got signed right around the same time as her. Charlie Morningstar. Well... Charlie, <clears throat> I will say, has been hit or miss on victories, but she has had some very fantastic matches. She has had a, a, a go-home barn burner match against AJ Lee, who is, uh, when we talk about win-loss record, we don't ever really do that. Or, you know, what we should do with less. She's done it. She's one of the greatest of all time. One of the greatest matches, rather, of all time. In terms of two out of threes, do you know how many times they kicked out of each other's finishers? It was nuts. They know each other so well. But I'll tell you what. I don't know, Charlie's just gonna have to fight. But when you think about the structure, Hell in a Cell, she should be right at home. That's all I'm saying. Let's see if she's gonna be able to come out on top, though. As these two... I think friendly rivals uh, go up against uh, two competitors that I think would be, you know, more so uh, not so friendly rivals after what has happened over the summer. From what I've learned, uh, Queen doesn't quite remember everything that went there. And here she is. Uh, kind of just like dancing as if nothing ever really happened. Having a jolly good time, shaking, dancing. What else can I really say? It's it's weird, you know. Because I don't think she she doesn't know or remember that she did those things, but I'm I'm sure someone has told her. So maybe she j should want to make amends, saying I know I didn't do it, but you know. I still feel bad that it happened. It's not really her fault. I think other people may need to make amends. 
maybe those people who, you know, failed her upgrade, but you know what? What has happened has happened. Out last, however, is someone whose life was endangered by Queen. Someone we thought for a moment had perished. Well, that seems to not be the case. She is the master of ice. She might hit you with a move that she doesn't even know. And it may be the strongest move you've ever seen. We'll see how Noel, the 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 supreme, I guess, priest of ice, I don't know, is able to perform under the intense heat of hell in a cell. I'm, I'm excited. I'm also wondering how, you know, Queen and Noel will, will interact. Maybe they'll try and stay away from each other. Maybe not. Incredible camera work done here by the Watcher. Best of luck to you, Noel. In this spin the wheel, make the deal match, Arvin was the one last time to come out with a victory. Who will it be this time? We'll see. We will see indeed. I'm very excited to find out. The cell comes down, you see the cage, uh, the door rather, already locked. And it has hit the ground. Charlie, Queen, Neo, Noel. Four competitors, one match after this, but first they're gonna have to fight their way through hell. Ooh, Clyde! Clyde in charge of this fight. Neckbreaker on a Noel. got here Queen gloating a little bit Noel may have filled her heart may have filled her eyes with fury now has to refocus on Neo you know the two of them I could see being an interesting pair one reminds me of ice cream the other one clearly reminds me of ice oh my gosh rolling big boot to Queen <coughs> it almost seems like anytime Noel has the opportunity to go after Queen, she certainly and sincerely does, and honestly, it looks like everyone kind of has, um, not that beef, but, you know, has that intensity against Queen. She's made a lot of enemies, not a lot of friends over this past year. Haluva kick out of nowhere by Neo, as the both of these two are actually going down. As it looks like our friendly rivals will be the ones going after each other in just a moment. Hops over Queen, and now... Charlie with that. Oh my gosh, not a suplex, just through Neo. Neopolitan. Forced to roll out of the ring. Queen lifting up Noel. Into a backpack stunner. Charlie, right there, ready for Queen to finish that move. Goes right after her, but look at that friendly rival right behind him. Uh, oof. I was going to say Charlie. Got the reversible, reversing right back is Neo. Apparently they know each other better than I thought. Choke slam, no, choke hold. Punch to the forehead. Already a two count. We had already seen a two count just a moment ago. Noel dropped onto the turnbuckle queen, getting dragged to the ropes. Luckily, Queen not in a giga form. The last time we saw Queen inside Hell in a Cell, I believe that's when she was in giga form and threw Arrow directly into the cell from the ring. An, incre an incredible and honestly downright terrifying feat of strength. Some of us still have nightmares about that neck breaker by Charlie. Charlie returned. I, I was going to say the re receipt just got returned. Oh my gosh. It's like a drop kick, but nobody moved. Oh my gosh. Noel takes a kick right to the throat. Uppercut by Neo. What is this maneuver? A little chocolate, a little strawberry, a little vanilla. Back to back to back. Nice little combo there. Queen tossed, and ooh, belly to belly, overhead, 
And look at this, trying to roll Queen up real quick for one, two, ooh, no, just for one. Whole lot of fight left. Noelle's the only one who's eating the finisher in this fight. Neo pulled back uh, into that shoulder block. Uh. Charlie focusing in. Honestly, Charlie seems to be the most focused in this fight. Uh. Queen back in. Neo tossed on the outside. So is Noelle. <clears throat> and it looks like everyone has escaped the ring. But not the cell. Will this action remain contained inside hell in a cell? That's a big question. Do we have any answers for it? At the very least, not yet. Super kick right to the back. Huh? Charlie in a terrible position. Because right now, everybody's in the same little alleyway as Noel's face goes into the steel. Finishers and signatures are starting to get racked up on everybody. No weapons introduced to this mix either. Noel, I think, realizing, yeah, I gotta stay out of this. Uh, tossed over. And what exactly is... Ooh, I was gonna say, what's going on here? Uppercut. They're dancing. They're playing a very dangerous game. Inside of the ring, though, I was gonna say, if they keep dancing outside the ring, inside the ring, we could see a quick pin, a quick roll-up. Especially as just tossed into the corner, Charlie. Still focused on Queen. One big shot. Queen's face going to the turnbuckle on the outside. Noel thrown to the ground. Neo getting back into the ring saying, all right, perfect. I just need to hit a big move on my rival and does just that. With that scoop of the neck, one, two, Charlie kicks out. Well, I'll be. Roll up by Charlie. Broken up quickly by Queen. Oh, uh, but what is Queen thinking here? Fastball punch. Looked over at Noel for a second and instead focused right back on Charlie. <coughs> Tried to hit that punch again. Didn't work out in her favor. And instead, Queen, with a reversal of her own, Noel up to the top rope. Oh my gosh, and hits a move on Queen instead. Had all the time in the world did it on Neo, but instead said, Well, if it isn't Queen. Big discus clothesline. These four are tearing each other apart. At the very least, they're at least keeping that contained inside of the structure. Roll up. Quick break up. Oh my gosh! And a quick break of the poor face of Charlie. Neo, I think, seeing what could happen here, lifting Charlie back up, saying, hey, if I get one more big move on you. Up on the shoulders, dropped on the ropes. Goes for the pin. Charlie might be done. Charlie might be down and out. One, two. Resiliency burned by Charlie. <clears throat> the first in this fight. She's still got Iron Jaw. But I'll tell you what, with Noelle in there right now, if she's able to get a good reversal off, she's got a good chance of winning this fight as the other two are distracted on the outside. Oh, but I'll tell you what, this doesn't look good for Noelle at all. Face first into the mat. One, two. Kick out no resiliency. Kick out, no resiliency. Oh, but she's going to the top rope. What is Charlie thinking here? Begging from the top, from heaven to hell with that elbow right to the top of the dome. Thinking about going to the corner. And now look who's entered the ring. Stares down at Charlie. But Charlie ready for it. Up. And look at that reversal as well this time. And Neo knows she can steal it. One, two. Charlie can't kick out. Reversing the finisher and gets the shoulders down in a quick 
but effective fashion. Neo steals the win inside Hell in a Cell. Good for it, and Pins, somebody who joined right around the same time as her saying, you should be keeping your eyes on me. And we will. But we gotta move on because there is one fight left. Congratulations to Neo. May have a little championship opportunity in the near future as well as the stars go. Black. We got one more fight. And it is. Uh, uh, it, it will be in a second after I fix it. I'm keeping this in because, you know, it is a 2K moment. Uh, here to here. Where are you? Thank you, Eggman. Alright, there we go. Uh, and you did reset that, so put Samantha back in. Thank you. Now, it is correct. It is Kevin versus Ryoma versus Eggman. Triple threat, the last... <clears throat> spot not to be earned by the the battle royales who will come in on top is the real question I was gonna say two of these people have pretty iconic wins Ryoma was the Kang of the Rang huh? the the royal crown Kang Kang Ryoma we also had Eggman who defeated Sonic.exe in one-on-one -on -one action did it in a little cheeky fashion had a little fist full of, 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 of brass and said, uh, while the referee was distracted, went for that pin, got it. Uh, and Kevin, who uh, needs to prove himself. That much I'll say. And what better way to prove yourself than right here, when the stars go. Black. And Kevin has that opportunity. What would Kevin dress up as? You know what, I'm sure there's a lot of skins for IDV. For Kevin, I guess, probably, maybe. Who knows? Huh? <clears throat> 169 pounds. Huh? Nice. Kevin <clears throat> was voted in by you guys, put one heck of a fight over at AV Mania 3. Was almost All-Star Champion there. Has an opportunity to get a one-on-one -on -one shot for the All-Star Championship at Brawloween. Will he try to correct a course, or rather course correct, at Brawloween? He's got to get through tonight. At worst, he's got to get through Friday. We'll see what he's able to do. However, he ain't the only one. He's going up against two of the greats. First... Oh no, he's still. Oh gosh. Weighing in at 315 pounds, Doctor! Okay, well, let me talk to you guys. First and foremost, I went into Create a Superstar, I changed his, his hair, saved it, and changed it back. He's just broken. <clears throat> he's broken and he's broken bad. Oh man, Toph got him bad. Uh, Eggman, I don't know which one of your experiments went wrong, maybe. But my my guy, you know, you. And so you know what? It's it's two K things, and you know it's 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 a it's it's a functioning game. Yep, fix your hair, my guy. It's not fixed. It's 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 still okay. Yeah. At least your mustache is all right, Tim. Your beard's a little crooked. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure what to say about this. Eggman, go see a different barber. One who doesn't paste fair, uh, hair to your forehead. Regardless. Uh, here comes Real. The Kang! Oh my gosh, the Kang is running fast. Uh. The, the, the Kang is... Oh, okay. All right, you know... I'm still not used to it. 
<clears throat> because he he came down here with the quickness. Uh, that may have been the fastest entrance I've ever seen. Kang, welcome welcome to rebellion. Yeah, I believe in him. That's our Kang of the Ring. That's our royal crown, Kang Ryoma. He'll be in that tournament again come February. Uh, it should. That sounds right. Let's see what the Kang's able to do against Eggman and a cowboy. A doctor, a tennis pro, and a cowboy. Three, count them, three competitors. I want to see what they're able to do. Uh, Eggman's so big. <clears throat> and Ryoma's so small, he might crack him like an egg. Or maybe Eggman's the one who's going to get cracked, because look at this. We know that this man's is one of the greatest of all time. We know Ryoma. When he's putting in work, he's putting in work. And Eggman very easily the first one to bring a, a weapon into the fray, but doesn't actually put it into the ring. I think he's trying to do a little bit of damage before he's forced to bring in those weapons. Looking over at Kevin. Kevin with a reversal, but... Gets attracted... With that bear hug locked in deep. Ryoma breaks it up. Kang in the corner. Uh, Kevin able to duck that clothesline and goes after Eggman himself, but Eggman just a little bit too fast. Lifts the cowboy up. And Kevin goes down on the turnbuckle, but Ryoma, heavy hands in his own right, striking Eggman, but I was going to say Eggman just still hasn't been down. Oh, look at that. Couldn't get the rebound. Is out of nowhere. A big time DDT by Kevin. And rolling that foot into the face of the Kang. Says there's no Kangs in the world of Cowboys. Ryoma with a beautiful Hurricane Rana into some punches. But he might want to watch his back because... Take it all back. I was going to say because there's a sledgehammer in the hand of Kevin. But the dropkick nails Ryoma. Off the ropes. Catches him with a kick again. Elbow to the back. Ryoma kips right back up. Kevin. Oh, I thought it was in the corner. But Ryoma pulls him right back into a kick. And is now... Going wild with a big splash by the small man. Kevin wisely rolls out. Back rake to Ryoma. Eggman now in control. Kevin brings in a table. Eggman misses wildly with one shot. Then throws Ryoma onto the, the jagged metal edges of that table. Still going flying with a headbutt. Breaking things up. Sammy tried to get into position quickly. Not enough time. Eggman... Hasn't really been touched in this fight. The small moves... I was going to say the small moves that have been done to him. He's been able to roll out not too long afterwards. Big suplex Falcon's arrow onto Eggman. Now Eggman's starting to take that damage. Ryoman also dropped on that table again. Eggman looking to ooh, toss the cat. Look, everybody's been dropped on that table except for Eggman at this point. I don't think we reiterate enough that the metal parts of those table, uh, those tables rather, they hurt and they hurt bad. Not as bad as like what happened to Samara onto that ladder. And speaking of ladders, we got one in play. And now the only man standing. Ryoma for just a moment as Kevin makes his way to his feet. DDT on the Eggman now starting to feel the after effects of being in this matchup with these two more nimble gentlemen. Uh, combos by Kevin. Able to stun the Eggman. If Kevin's able to work up a signature or finisher at this point, maybe both, he could get rolled up. Sammy trying to get into position. Tried to almost had to smack the ladder because of it. Kevin taken down quickly by Eggman. Reverse DDT. No, look at that. Oh my gosh, onto the ladder. Face first of Eggman onto the ladder, but Eggman said it don't matter to me. Samoan drop onto the back end of the table. 
headbutts by Eggman. Kevin in the ring. Eggman uses his whole body weight to try and decimate poor Ryoma. But Eggman's the first one busted open in this fight. As Kevin says, all right, that's enough of that, goes with a kendo stick on everybody. Hurricane Rana of his own. Trying his best to prove that he's not a boy flop, climbs to the top rope. We may see him. Frog splash. Picture perfect. One, two. Ryoma burns resiliency. Eggman took far too long to get back in the ring. Just like that, the advantage lies in... Oh, I was going to say lies with uh, Eggman and Kevin, but Ryoma's still back up to his feet. And that, that, that ended very quickly because he got clothesline on the back of his neck. Rolling that elbow. Into a sunset flip. Power bomb. Center of the ring. Center of the ring and Ryoma's down. One, two. Rolled right back up. One. Rolled up again. One. Back and forth with those roll-ups. Nobody burned resiliency. Kevin didn't have resiliency. And Ryoma says one ladder, not enough. Drop kick to the knee was not enough to take Eggman down. Eggman dragging Kevin to the corner gets him there. But what does the sadistic Dr. Robotnik have in store for that man? Nothing at this point because he just took a chair shot right to the face. Maybe enough to keep him down for one Kevin there to break it up. Huh? Ryoma knows he's got a lot of fight to do to stay alive in this match. Huh? To win this match. Huh? Oh no. Tried to hit the brass knuckles. Kevin with the reversal. With Ryoma down like that, that could have been the end of resiliency for Kevin. Reversal there. Chops to the back. Drop kick to the back to Kang. Focusing on Kevin. Kevin with the reversal again. Here's the thing. Kang Ryoma has no resiliency. And so he's down for one. Would have been two, but Eggman broke it up. Ugh! Spinning back elbow to the face of the cowboy. Everyone's favorite prisoner now. Going toe to toe with Eggman. As Realm was dropped on the ropes. Stomp to the midsection, stomp to the back. And Eggman's got a table. Puts it in the corner, and we may see someone go right through it. Kevin begging for him to get up. I'm not sure if that was the best decision. Oh, look at this. Unintentionally save Ryoma, but maybe that was so that he could get a move done on himself. No! Ryoma lands on his feet, goes for the pinfall right afterwards. Kevin still at one. Kevin is still at one, and I want to point out. If Kevin's able to hit a big move, the Kang could be down. Oh my gosh, but out of nowhere, that bulldog from Eggman. We all thought that he was going after Ryoma, but instead went to Kevin. Realizes he might have to do a lot more to put him away. Oh, look at this. Ryoma's hidden power sends Eggman flying. And now the two of them are working on the Big Egg. Oh, but I'll tell you what, the Big Egg may have just proven that, that why he is the Big Egg. And why he's so tough to crack. I can't see anything, uh, but look at that. Repositioning the camera, I appreciate that. Rolling back. Kevin in there alone with Eggman. Is he going to be able to get the damage he needs done to the big egg? Ryoma quickly rolls himself up. Slides into the ring. Gets the sledgehammer. And a roll up by Eggman. Not, you know, you don't often expect to see Eggman, that big man, hit that big roll up. Ryoma on the shoulders. Samoan drop by Eggman. But behind him, Kevin was waiting says Eggman get out of there because ladies and gentlemen this may be curtain calls 
Eggman busy reverse. Oh, uh, I'm not, not reversing. Celebrating. Not enough. Uh, tossed outside. Eggman tossing Kevin. And ladies and gentlemen, he goes under. He was trying to hit that egg carrier. Didn't work out in his favor. Lifts him up again. Doesn't work out in his favor. Kevin turns him around, but just like that, Eggman reverses back. Oh my gosh. What a back and forth between these two. And I'll tell you what, he could be in trouble now. Eggman. Oh, what the eggplant. Says you stay there as I take out your Kang. My gosh. Eggman goes on to brawl Owen. Busted open. But he is that guy. He is that egg. The Kang will still have another opportunity. The Cowboy will still have another opportunity, but we know for sure now. Four of the five competitors going on to Brawloween for that Masquerade Brawl. We'll click exit real quick because of tonight. We just saw <clears throat> Eggman, the Man of Eggs, will be joining Uncle Iroh, Cassius, and Crow in that five-person brawl. The Masquerade Brawl. However, either Mondo, Joker, Shingcho, Fulgent, Gin, Morgana, Ryoma, or Kevin will be joining them. As they will all be competing in an eight-person battle royale for the final spot in the Masquerade Brawl. And just like we found out earlier, when the one and only Von Karma took that W. She will join Kotoko, Sakura, and Chie in the Masquerade Brawl. However, joining them will either be Mona, Clover, Namona, Mabel, Igis, Queen, aka Makoto, Navia, or Tamara. The winner of their eight-person battle royale. And those two battle royales will be this Friday at Fracture. Get excited for it. Brawloween is starting to take fold, take shape. As we go on, we saw... Neo, be an opportunist tonight, honestly. That match, Helena Sells could have gone on for way longer, but she saw her opportunity inside of. Nope, that's my pin, that's my target. Jacob, in an astounding effort, won a one-on-three tag match. What can I say? Kaito and March, the champions were able to topple... Akihiko and Hina in a great mixed tag team match that saw March 7th get the better of Hina. And lastly, as we mentioned earlier, Von Karma going on to that Masquerade Brawl. That is our rebellion. We have, I believe, uh, to one more rebellion. Yes, one more rebellion before the special event Brawloween on the 26th, because today is Sunday the 13th, I have to keep in mind. Um, I mean, next, next rebellion should be fun. This Friday will be the last Fracture before Brawloween, and Brawloween will be uh, this uh, next. It's the 26th. <laughs> so get excited for it, I'm excited for it, until then. I'm taking off. Luckily, nothing crazy happened tonight. Uh, we can also watch our child me back on, or the stars go. What? What a night we've had. No shenanigans happened. Thankfully. Incredible. It's been a while. A lot of shenanigans tend to happen here at Rebellion, but I'll tell you what. I'm glad we had a good night of just clean action. As we get closer to Brawloween... I'm not sure if that's going to continue, but we'll, we'll hope. We'll hold down the fort. We got a good security team. And I'll tell you what. We got good action because Brawloween's right around the corner. Get excited for it. I'll go ahead and end this song. Thank you. I didn't want to end it because we were right there. 
Um, and we will go ahead and close out to uh, the music that you'll be hearing at the start of Brawloween. Because it is right around the corner. Spooks, jump scares, ghost ghouls, skeletons, mummies, and all the like. Who will dress up as what? Brawloween's right around the corner. Get excited. We're gonna have so many competitors dressed up from head to toe. And I'm excited, to say the least. Until this Friday, for Fracture until next Sunday, for the final rebellion before Brawloween, I'm taking off Toodaloo Flight Crew. Thanks for watching.